the climate crisis is growing worse rapidly. And it is growing worse more rapidly than the world is developing and implementing solutions. We live in a world where consumption is ever growing and we sort of know that we are destroying the world by it. And today we're building a society based upon technology and yet we're not talking about the fact that rare earth metals is key to actually enable electronics and we're running out of them. One of the things we uh, try to look into is the inequalities of sustainable development and how to solve that and how to map that. We have what can only be described as a global emergency. The phrase, all hands on deck, applies. In an era of profound societal and environmental change, education institutions around the world face a growing responsibility to address the pressing issues of our day. By educating the future workforce with a sustainability mindset, the University of Oslo is uniquely placed to provide solutions to achieve sustainability in business, government and civil society. Anthrotox is a group of PhD students and senior scientists from a range of disciplines and we work together to explore the effects of electronic waste in East Africa and in Norway. The kind of interdisciplinary work that the Life Science Initiative fosters allows us to address the crucial issues that face humanity in a sustainable and innovative manner. So interdisciplinary work like this is helpful for fostering critical thinking as well as to find sustainable solutions to the global challenges that we all face. Restart is Norway is an organisation that has sprung out of London-based Restart project and we work to change people's relationship with electronics. We are arranging restart parties where people can come and repair their broken electronics and it's a social learning arena where you can come and really experience the joy of actually managing to repair things. I became really acutely aware of all the challenges related to environmental consumption worldwide. Producing electronics requires so much CO2, chemicals and water, but also a lot of scarce resources like rare earth metals. The University of Oslo is a big institution. We educate students uh, both looking at the environmental aspects of sustainability and we're especially interested in the social aspects. Uh, some of the measures taken to increase sustainability, to increase the livability of cities, focus on specific areas or hotspots which will benefit everybody. After the Ebola crisis, it became visible for the global health community that having routine systems is super important for a country to be prepared for being able to tackle this yourself. So HISP is the Health Information Systems Program. DHS2 is the platform for monitoring health in uh, the global south for low and middle income. So we are not only building a software platform, we are doing it in a global community, the students, together we are building this through capacity building. So together we work with the health indicators, work with WHO, the World Health Organization. So we have been collaborating with them this past uh, 10 years. So they use DHS2 as a platform for HIV, TB, malaria, nutrition and so forth. When people or politicians ask me about the return of its investment or the impact of the University of Oslo. It is our strong research-based education. It's our students. After all, we educate the candidates that through history has filled the positions in the big and responsible we. In order to succeed, they must contribute to society, both with a set of skills and importantly, a value set that supports a sustainable planet Earth. Sustainability issues are complex in nature. What is clear is that the goals cannot be reached by one researcher or one department alone. The University of Oslo believes that connecting people and disciplines is key to achieving a more sustainable world. 
We have one PhD student in Tanzania at the moment who looks at repair and recycling practices around electronics in Dar es Salaam city. And he works together with another PhD student who mainly works in Norway together with the organization Restarters, trying to extend the life cycle of electronics. Being a student really gave me a really broad understanding of the environmental questions and found electronic consumption as one of the issues that I really want to focus on. No one at that time especially was really writing about repair of electronics, which really made me think I have to write about this because it's just not being focused at all. The students are tomorrow's decision makers, so it's really, really important that we give them the right training and the right practice, but also the right methods and theoretical perspectives on how to deal with the complexity of the future. And the city is really a place where this complexity can be analyzed. I live in one of the richest countries in the world, in a place where we consume enormously. Working in this country and living in this country, I think we do have a responsibility to rethink our ways of life. So the first point is really to try to find ways of living differently, living with less growth, without, however, losing the pleasures and, and security of life. Electronics is the fastest growing waste stream at, uh, worldwide and at the same time it's extremely harmful for the environment both in terms of production and mining and also how much waste that is being dumped in open dump sites. Some of the companies that produce uh, swap contracts try to give us a good conscience saying the old phones after one year will go for a good purpose somewhere in the world but is that really so? What happens to them there and what are the effects? 22 components in my computer are this estimated there will be a global scarcity of them by 2030 and no one is talking about this and yet we are not recycling any of them. And so what are the solutions in order to change the way we consume electronics? And the RISA project worked to change people's relationship with electronics and to empower them to create more sustainable consumption. I love working with cities and now it's recognized that cities play an increasing role in creating a sustainable society. So that makes it both fun, interesting and important. Well, my personal motivation for doing this kind of work is concern with the way in which we live in this world and we consume. I really think that if we want to have sustainable consumption, things also need to be designed for being durable. We need spare parts to be available. All these things connected really makes us think about repair as something different, something progressive and constructive in a way of going towards a sustainable future. At present, we see the danger, we hear the messages from Mother Nature, we have the solutions, they can be implemented. What's left to discuss?